Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. I'm joined now on Corn School by uh, Jeremy Hogan. Uh, hey, Jeremy, thanks for stopping by. You bet, Burn. Thanks for having me. Hey, now you are based in uh, Illinois. You work with uh, BASF. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about yield. Uh, everybody's excited about corn yields these days and where they're coming from. And uh, you've, uh, you, you've outlined really about, about four you know, key facts or, or key aspects of corn yields. Take me through it. You bet. Well, when we think about maximizing corn yield, you know, everybody's looking for the silver bullet, but in my opinion, it really doesn't exist. But more importantly, we need to break down the four yield components. And really those components are maximizing ear count. The only way we can maximize ear count is to get every seed that we plant to grow uniformly and produce a nice big ear on it. Okay, so there's some things that can cause those stresses along the way that can cause a reduction in ear count and uh, so we've got to manage those stresses. That was yield component number one. Number two would be protecting the number of rows around. And again, there are stresses along the way when that plant is determining the number of rows around, for example, around V5 or V6 that can cause that plant to say, you know, I can't hold on to 20 rows around. I'm going to shrink down to 18 around. And we've potentially lost 20 bushel when that occurs. The third yield component is maximizing the number of kernels on the tip of that ear. Again, particularly as we're getting close to pollination during and following pollination, we have to make sure that we're maximizing the number of kernels that that ear is physically capable of producing. And then the fourth yield component is maximizing seed size and seed weight. A lot of that has to do with environmental conditions as well as other factors or other products that we have that we can apply to that corn plant at the right time to extend grain fill to help maximize kernel size and weight. I want to talk about a couple of these your specific components. I want to start with uh, rows per ear. And every time, you know, when I see those staggered rows, um, you know, at the, at the butt or at the top, I wonder what happens. What does happen? Yeah, that's a good question. And often it's, it's difficult to figure that out. And it could be something that was an environmental factor where we had cold weather that came in when that plant was determining the number of rows around. We could have issues such as uh, tillage layers or, or issues, density layers, where the roots weren't able to get down and extract and pull in mo moisture and nutrients at the time it was determining the number of rows around so we could stagger kernels. You know, some other things that we typically look at is weed control. And I've seen situations where we didn't put a good, strong residual herbicide down and we get to that V4 to V5 stage and those young corn plants are competing with these weeds and that plant senses that and says, you know what, I gotta pull back. I gotta go from 18 down to 16 because I just can't hold on to that many if I have to compete with these weeds. And you also talked about, you know, soil density. I mean, those, you know, we, we've got to make sure that we don't have hard pan down there as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. And the important thing is that most farmers really don't probably realize is where that density layer changes from the A horizon to the B horizon. And if there is a density layer in there that's natural, then how do we incorporate those two layers and make a smoother transition for that root when it does get to that layer? We also tend to put tillage layers out there with the heavy equipment that we're running across there. And if we put a tillage layer out there, if we're working a field too wet in the spring, then those roots may stop, hit that tillage layer, and then grow horizontally, restricting, restricting moisture and nutrient uptake at critical times. Yeah, you talked about that. You know, you know that you need to minimize the mobilization of nutrients. I mean, talk yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah, well, we know that if we're planting corn after a crop such as soybean or uh, such as uh, wheat or oats or a, uh, a continuous corn rotation, we tend to have a very serious immobilization issue if we're not paying what we call a carbon penalty. And so it's important to make sure that we have particularly nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus right there at that young corn plant's root, mat, root zone in order to prevent immobilization from occurring. And if we have immobilization occur at the wrong time, again, we can have a stagger in the number of rows, reducing overall yield potential. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about um, seed weight. And we talk about, you know, I've heard so much now that, hey, we've got to fill that seed. We want heavy seed weights. And I talked with Dr. Tony Vine, Purdue University, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And he said, Bernard, it's so great now that we've learned to split our nitrogen. These, these uh, hybrids are taking up nitrogen late. Yep. And the plant is healthy. That is yeah. so important. And that's obviously where, you know, BASF fits in. Yeah, absolutely. We have to keep that plant healthy down the home stretch during grain fill. 
And Tony's right, because if we're short on nitrogen and we don't have a healthy plant, then it's going to be tough to have enough photosynthates to get the large kernels that we're looking for to, to maximize yield. We have some products at BASF that we typically apply just prior to, during, or following pollination as we're getting to, ready to enter that grain fill period that can help keep that plant alive longer, keep it healthier to where we can extend grain fill and potentially gain larger kernels in certain environments, such as if we have a shortage of solar radiation or sunlight, we aren't photosynthesizing as high rates as we would like an application of, of some of our plant health products can allow for higher photosynthetic rates in maybe the absence of solar radiation. Now, you, you did some research and you, you, you talked about it today in your presentation that, you know, yes, we have the solar radiation and, the, the, and it's driving this extended grain fill pro, uh, period. Talk about the length of that period uh, that you're seeing now. Yeah, well, it varies based on geography, but I know what the grain fill period is for my geography in central Illinois. And what I found with certain years where we have either a shortage or an excess of solar radiation, that can either shorten or extend our grain fill period. And so that's critically important to maximizing yield. Photosynthesis drives yield. Sunlight drives photosynthesis. And so the more solar radiation we have, the greater chance or better position we put ourselves in to maximize yield. But again, if we're short on that solar radiation, we do have products that could potentially help us maintain photosynthesis at a higher rate in the absence of sunshine. And we've got to keep that plant healthy, late season plant health. Late season plant health is critical in order to extend grain fill, photosynthesize maybe four, five, six days longer than if we did not make an application of a product that can help us keep that plant healthy. And that all transitions into bigger, larger kernels and an extension of that grain fill period. Awesome, Jeremy. Hey, thank you, sir, for stopping by. Great to have you on the Corn School. All right, Brian, appreciate it.